Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Today we're off to the Netherlands to visit Urban Aero's new headquarters and to see how Europe's premier electric cargo bike manufacturer operates. Okay, so I'm here with Frank, uh, Director of Business here at Urban Arrow, and one of the founding fathers, really, of, of the business. I think you said you were number seven? Yeah, number the... seven. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And, and the growth has been enormous, hasn't it, over the last year? I think yeah. you've gone from 60 to 130 employees or something. Yeah, it's amazing. It's going so fast. Uh, like I started in 2017 over here, I was number seven, and now we're with 130 colleagues over here, so it's grown. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, I guess this is the kitchen of Urban Area. This is where it's all happening. Yeah, this is production line of our cargo bikes. So we have two divisions, family on one side, cargo on the other. Uh, this is the place where all the two-wheeled cargo bikes are being built. Uh, they're completely built by hand by our employees over here. So this is the production line for the front frames. You see in the back, the, the front part, the front suspension. And you have a number of kind of production facilities outside and everything's coming in and being finally assembled here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. So, and that, and that outsourcing allows you to have, have powered up production and, and hopefully mitigate some of the supply issues in, in the long run. Then. Yeah, hopefully, we do. Uh, hopefully that solves a bit of a problem in getting enough supplies in. Uh, our bikes are um, connectable always, so all the rear ends are the same as the front end, so we mm -hmm. can combine things. So, for instance, if a rear frame is made in Greece and the front frame is produced over here, we can connect them, so that works very smoothly. So we've moved from one enormous room into another enormous room. The first one was all about business. This right. is now about the family side of things. So yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about the, the production element in here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, second hall, family hall. For us, uh, well, the main business of our uh, company is family. It's like 85% uh, is family bikes, 15% is business bikes. So we're producing thousands of bikes, uh, a couple of hundred uh, monthly basis, if every supply come in uh, as we would like to. And uh, you mentioned, I think, the ponds recently expanded into um, North and South America also, so that will affect the Urban Arrow uh, distribution. Or? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Together with Gazelle, we uh, sell our Urban Arrows in North America. We do not sell them in South America. We're still not capable of getting enough bikes to do so. Sure. And also, the, maybe the distribution network over there is not so cargo bike orientated. Uh, but in North America, it works very well, also in Canada. So it's really very successful over there. Great, right, cool. So over here we're at the logistic department. Uh, these are all the bikes ready to be shipped. Uh, these ones here in front are mainly for the Benelux market and the German market. Uh, the ones in the back uh, are for the UK market, France, so for further away we ship them not completely assembled but in boxes. So it's much safer and much more efficient to be transported uh, abroad. Great. And next up, customers. Happy customers. Hopefully a lot of happy customers, yeah. Uh, so we got supplies in from uh, Lithuania, from Greece, from our other production partners. And it's really like a constant process. So everything over here is sold. Uh, these bikes, they will be assembled as, uh, uh, as shipping ready. And then the other flow comes in as well. So trucks are running off and on every day over here. And I recognize the yellowy orange there. That looks like DHL, is that right? Yeah, you are right. Yeah, these are the first bikes for DHL. So we're very happy uh, that they uh, become customer and they have these customized bikes. And we're very proud of that. Yeah, of course. It's a great relationship. And it's nice to see such a big business you know, doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. For us, it's absolutely the right thing. For us, it's still a no-brainer that a bike is ideal for in the city centers. And yeah. more and more big companies become aware of that. And uh, yeah, bikes are getting part of their business as well. Great, and we took a ride around uh, Amsterdam yesterday afternoon. We were just blown away by the infrastructure that you have and, yeah. and how well it's set up. I mean, we've seen big changes over the last sort of five years in London, yeah. certainly in the last two years as a result of like COVID pandemic and stuff. Yeah. Um, things are getting better, but we're still a way behind. So how important do you think infrastructure is on the, the, the growth of, of the industry? And, yeah, it's extremely uh, important because if you've got a, a, a well-suited uh, infrastructure, everybody's feeling safe to get a bike and go through the city center. Uh, but you see a lot of changes, but it takes time. That's, you know, in Holland, we used to cycle from the well, early 70s until now it's completely normal to, to, to use a bike in the city center. But that's not normal 
outside of the Netherlands. But yeah. we're getting there. If you look at Milan, in Brussels, in London, in, in big German cities as well, even in America, they're really looking at better infrastructure for, uh, for cycle. So in the end, we will come there, but it will take time. Frank, upstairs now in the office, uh, you mentioned about the transparency. It's really obvious. It's such a great space. Can you tell us about what's going on in each of these rooms? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is uh, the, the, the sales and D&D department. So our R&D teams are working over here. We've got a, a office over here for our uh, R&D team working on the future cargo bikes. Just behind me, it's the same, but for the family versions. In the end, we've got the sales offices and some, well, meeting rooms over here. So it's a really very nice atmosphere over here. Everybody loves to work. You can see it's Friday, everybody's working from home. So now it's very quiet, but normally it's quite packed over here. It's a great opportunity to talk a bit more about the history of Urban Hour and how it all started. Um, how did it all start? Well, it started uh, as a very, very small company. There were two guys, uh, Jorrit and Gerald, with an idea that uh, uh, Buckfeeds, like cargo bike in Dutch, uh, could be much better than it used to be. Uh, in the beginning, uh, they started just off with, uh, with the electric cargo bike because they both had a, re a regular one and they uh, brought their kids to school and then, uh, well, they said that could be easier. And that was just a very simple idea uh, to electrify the cargo bike, which were already on the market. And they were put together by, uh, uh, well, somebody who knew them both. They contacted Wietse, which is the designer of the family bike. Um, and yeah, that started it with three people with a good idea. So very small in Amsterdam. And uh, the good thing is that all three people are still within the company. So Yeah, we saw them at lunch yesterday. Yeah, everybody's yeah. still here. So that's really cool. And uh, everybody feels very much uh, well, connected. And then after two years, they also said, well, we could also use it for cargo use. So in 2012 it was, the first cargo bike was produced. And then it took off, both family and cargo. And in the beginning, we were really like, everybody was looking at your crazy people, crazy Dutch doing some crazy things with bikes, but in the end it works out perfectly fine. If you look around, every big brand is now starting to produce cargo bikes. Hmm. And big changes recently, obviously with the purchase by Pond Group, probably the largest um, bike industry business in the world. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, Pond was connected two years ago to Urban Aero and well, they agreed to work together. We're, and it works perfectly fine for us. Uh, if we need any specific need, if we have any specific needs, we can ask them. Uh, but still, we are the specialist in cargo bikes, and that will remain. So we're having our own decisions, our own ideas, but we can work together, especially on supply chain issues and stuff like that. That's great. And it's really good to have uh, such a big company together with us. So you've been left to your own devices, still doing all the great things, but you have the support of the mighty giant behind you. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like a mighty giant. Uh, like we had lunch uh, yesterday. Uh, yeah, the, 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 well, everybody from Pond is also well, having lunch over here, so it's really very normal. It's not they, like they join part of the family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think they like it. They have lunch uh, more often over here. So great. And I think you mentioned that uh, the business has grown enormously, especially in the last one year, from sixty to maybe one hundred and thirty uh, people, and yeah. still growing. Yeah, it keeps on growing. Yeah, it's going tremendously fast, and we get really very nice employees inside. Too. So we have. A so alongside all the growth of the business and the likes, it's, it's been a really difficult year in terms of supply, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been a rough year and it will be a rough year further on uh, because, well, as you know, supply chain is a bit messy all over the world. So we're having difficulties getting enough supplies in. Um, yeah. We have some specific frame parts coming from quite far away. And as you can see, well, <laughs> the whole world is turned upside down currently. So it's difficult to get a good flow and getting enough bikes out. Um, yeah, I mean, understatement, we've had Brexit, then we've had COVID, <laughs> now we've yeah. got the, the war in, in the Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. it's, it's problem after problem, not yeah. least to mention the, the problems that Bosch has had with the, the shortage of chips affecting battery production. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. um, I mean, you're really feeling the pressure, I guess, in your ability to, to produce, no? Absolutely, yeah. I think we should be capable of producing much more bikes than we can currently with uh, the current situation. And so, but we have to face it and uh, we try to um, react on that as good as possible, try to inform everybody as good as possible, but also we got surprise after surprise. Sometimes we are, well, just week, one week before delivery of some parts, we're told, uh, sorry, it's not coming. Sure. And then we have to react very fast and that's difficult in the current situation. At least, I guess, uh, I mean, they're such life-changing products, right? It's, they're worth the wait. 
it is worth a wait, absolutely. And I hope uh, if we look at the future that it will be much smoother and so we can have uh, a lot more bikes on the road. Fantastic. Oh, it's so great to see. Uh, it's so great to be part of it. We're really grateful for the, the invite over. Um, it's been a real eye opener. I think, um, you know, the, our takeaways are the, the real sort of family um, feel of this and, and, you know, what wonderful product you got. And it transfers the passion from, you know, you guys at Urban Area through the product. And hopefully we can portray that to our customers also. Yeah, well, I think you're doing an amazing job. We're very happy to work together with you for, uh, for a long time and also see you being very successful in the, in the market in London. So it's really, uh, yeah, very nice cooperation. We're very glad with it. <coughs> Great, well, thanks for the invite. It's been awesome. Cool.